Hi, my name is Martin Perhinyak and welcome back to the digital art series here on PSD Touch Plus. Today we are going to create a photo manipulation or we can call this matte painting on a very basic level where we start from a photograph and we draw or paint over the photograph to create some fictional elements on it and as you can see the final result we have this massive viaduct or bridge over the river and um, the whole landscape and obviously it's a really big exaggerated bridge in normal life you it won't work but um, if you want to do something it's always do something uh, a bit fun and more um, unreal but at the same time you would like to make it look real um, using the tools and techniques that we already learned and discussed in previous tutorials. We are going to use the vanishing point filter in this tutorial but other than that most of the uh, tools are going to be exactly the same as in the previous episodes. Also I'm going to use vector shapes so hopefully you will still learn some new techniques. And if you want to learn more about matte painting, there are so many great tutorials, uh, more advanced tutorials here on PSD Touch Plus. This is a very basic one and it just tries to show you the whole concept of working with a photograph and then just creating something new on top of it and try to match all the light sources and uh, all the shadows and colors of the new object with the original photograph. So let's get started and I'm going to first create a new layer and on that new layer I'm going to the vanishing point filter so it's under the filter menu and then vanishing point you need to define four points uh, which will define a plane in your photograph and once you have a plane you will see a grid now this grid can be extended and you can create more grids if you hold down control or command on Mac uh, on one of the corner points you can always create a new plane that's how I created that second plane and then you need to choose render grids to Photoshop option um, it's from the filter uh, filter menus left corner here I again show it render grids to Photoshop I know it's a bit fast but if you go back you can see where I chose this option and um, because I had a duplicate image um, by mistake I have to use a blend mode for this layer and I just chose multiply or actually sorry I started again and uh, I just filled it uh, with white and I just wanted to see uh, the grid itself and uh, behind the grid I want to see the image so now I start drawing with the shape tools and the pen tool and I would like to construct the geometry that I'm going to use for the bridge so you see I am using free transform tool the pen tool and the direct selection tool and selection tool and I work with these tools now I selected the whole uh, part that I just created and I adjust the size of it and then I start duplicating it I think I need a bit more uh, changes on the legs uh, so now I start to duplicate them and I would like to create a whole row of this so I'm always selecting all my layers and then holding down the alt with the move tool I drag and uh, create new duplicate now I've turned the whole all the layers into one smart object and I'm using the free trans transform tool to match the perspective that I created with the vanishing point it's just uh, it's not a real perspective it's just trying to follow the perspective of the image and now I went into the smart object by double clicking on the smart object uh, layers thumbnail and I extending the bridge when I save that smart object and I go back to the normal document I can see my changes will update keeping the whole bridge in perspective still so that's a really useful thing with smart objects if you want to learn more about it 
check out my basics uh, series there I talk more about how to work with smart objects now I'm experimenting a bit with uh, levels or using uh, duplicates and creating more levels on this bridge I just want to see it how it works which one is the best but then I'm going to decide to use only the the line on the top so just keep it simple and still I'm still thinking whether to use it or not as you can see I'm using a duplicate for that so it's completely non-destructive I can always adjust it change it back and forth but finally I will choose to use only the one on the top that one so now for that layer I create a layer style I first of all I did a color overlay I'm playing with that color I pick the color from the from the image itself and once I have this color overlay I can start uh, masking out the legs or the, these legs of the bridge where are columns on the bridge which I don't need so I adjust it to the image itself and now I can turn off the vanishing point um, or vanishing lines so as you can see now I create a shadow for the for the bridge I just duplicated made made a selection uh, from the edges of the of my layer and then I on a separate layer I just filled it in with black and now I'm using the free transform tool and I try to match the shadows of the image and actually it's not a good lighting situation to to create to easily create shadows because the the light comes from the far right so the shadows will be very long and they will probably go to the left which is quite hard to to draw on uh, this image but I still try to uh, match the shadows and later on I will make some changes to the shadows too I'm still working on the left side of the bridge some details there so this is with the shadow I'm adding some more details near the columns and I'm using colors from the image itself I just want to make this quickly uh, I can't spend too much time in this tutorial so I make it quick and dirty but you can see that once we add those shadows the bottom of the columns it makes it a bit more realistic and believable that this bridge is actually there in the photograph I'm, I'm playing with the uh, layer styles on this, this uh, layer and I would like to achieve the texture of like bricks or concrete uh, on the bridge so for that I'm using the texture layer style and I try to set the scale and the depth and all the uh, parameters the way I need it I also use bevel and boss bevel and emboss and I make sure that the bright parts are on the right because the sunlight is coming from the right so the highlights are on the right and the shadows are on the left to match our lighting scene lighting situation I'm still not happy with the texture itself so I'm using a different texture for it so this is how it looks uh, closer and probably I will go with this texture so now I have the color overlay and the bevel and the emboss uh, layer styles on this layer and now I'm going to work a bit more on the bottom side of the of the columns I also create the reflection in the river this is by the way the river Danube in Austria so there's the reflection I've just made a duplicate 
uh, reflect it down and then uh, I'm using a gradient uh, for the mask of this layer so now we have shadows reflection text texture we need to work a little bit more on uh, the details of the bridge mainly where the uh, columns meet the landscape we need to blend them more into the original photograph to make it look realistic and just like in any other examples I try to work completely non-destructively so that's why I'm using masks, smart objects and um, I don't erase, I only work on masks to avoid changes that I can't uh, work with okay so now I'm going to fix uh, the columns on the right because I'm quite happy with the ones on the left but here on the right I need to cover the bottom of the columns a bit so I'm using a separate layer on top of the bridge layer and I'm picking colors from the original uh, photograph and I'm just painting over the, the columns I also try to play a bit with the shadows but definitely in this case the light comes from the right so I can't use these lines it would be nice to have the light source in the background and then have long shadows coming towards us but in this case we can't really work with these so I just deleted the shadows that I created the first time and I'm going to only keep these ones here on the right because these are, are a little bit more uh, interesting even though they are not really matching the light source I still try to work with them sometimes you can cheat to, to achieve something that you prefer in this case it's a bit obviously risky I mean it can completely um, change the way the light work if you change the shadows but I think I can get away with this in this case you can see I'm fixing the columns the bottom of the columns make sure they look a little bit better and we are almost done as I said it's a really simple and basic um, way or, or example of using a new object on top of a photograph but based on this, the way I'm working on this, you can see that what are the steps you need to follow roughly to achieve something like this. Now I'm using an adjustment layer just to play a little bit with the colors it's a hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to also create something else on this image I would like to have just to see the scale I would like to have a train on top of the bridge as well so for that I created a new layer and for that new layer or on that new layer I just simply use my brush tool and I create the train the silhouette of the train and I want to make it visible but at the same time I want to keep it really small because as you can see the buildings at the bottom of the bridge are really really small so if I if you imagine it's roughly the same size um, applies to the train so I try to keep it realistic and, and small but at the same time I try to make it visible and now I was using the smoke brush that we created in a previous tutorial and 
we are almost done. I just blur the smoke out a bit and place it on top of the original one. So now we have the bridge and we have the train. So that's all what I would like. I wanted to show you, and um, I hope you found it interesting. The main main um, message of this tutorial is to try to use smart objects and masking to to work non-destructively whenever you work with uh, Photoshop. Most of the times in digital painting you are you won't need these uh, features but when you start to work together with a photograph you can always apply these um, techniques or features as well to your workflow. Thanks a lot for your attention and I hope you will join me next time.